Hey guys, Hackster Tech here for another video. And today we're gonna to be going over a tool that you can use um, to do video editing within your web browser so that you don't have to download a separate program. Uh, and it's called Flixier. And so this service is something that's gonna be an alternative to something like Camtasia or Wondershare Demo Creator and some of those other tools um, that you might be using for screen recordings. It could also be just your primary video editor. Uh, but one of the nice things about this particular service is depending on what you're using to do your video editing, because you can do this in your browser, it's gonna save you from needing uh, a device that can handle um, all the load of actual video editing. But also it's just a convenience of not having to download a separate program. Now you can see I have the service up here and all you do is just go to flixier.com, um, but you can also go to editor.flixier.com as well. Um, which is the direct link that I have here. And this is the actual page that I see once I'm logged in. Uh, but let's go ahead and just do a quick fresh search for it. So if I do Flixer here and I go ahead and search for it, um, I can go ahead and click on the link here. When you go to the main website, the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is sign up for a free account. So before we get into that, if we scroll down on the webpage here, you'll see some of the things that you can use this for. Um, you can use it to edit YouTube videos, uh, create courses, all the standard things that you would do with your video editing software. Gives you a quick look at some of the features you're gonna get and the actual user interface. And again, just like I mentioned, one of the really nice things here is that you can use this on devices that are uh, lower in terms of a capability if you don't have a gaming machine like I have for example uh, you'll still be able to use this but even more importantly perhaps is on a device like a Chromebook where you don't have access to traditional Windows applications to be able to do the editing because this is browser based this would actually be a perfect service if you wanted to do your editing from a Chromebook and you can't get something uh, like Camtasia or Wondershare Demo Creator on there. So anyway, if we want to go ahead and sign up, go ahead and head to flixier.com and click on the sign up for free option. And then all you'll need to do, you don't even need an account. As you can see, it's gonna go ahead and take you here uh, where you get this editor and you can immediately start using the service, which I really like. You don't even have to create an account from the beginning. Um, although it is recommended that you do that just to keep everything in order. So if you start from here, you can go ahead and begin by dropping files into here or browsing your machine. Uh, but what you do actually is if you go into the top right hand corner, I can go to my account settings and here is where I can actually start plugging in my information. Um, if you've never created an account before, you can go ahead and put in your name and information here, your phone number, um, specifically set a password and put in your email address. And this will tie your account um, back to you. So that way, if you want to access the tools here uh, from another device, you'll have everything synced up in one location. Uh, whereas before, obviously, um, you know, you would be mostly just locally managing all of your um, information, all your videos that you're editing here. So definitely recommend that you create this account um, if you're gonna use the service. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what you have here. So from the start, uh, we can go ahead and start creating folders. Um, so if I click on the new folder option here, um, I can create a test folder. And you can manage this just like a folder on your Windows device. I've got my folder where I can go ahead and start storing information. Okay, so now that I've created a folder, all I have to do is just click on that. And you can see that I can create a new project by clicking in here. Now when I click on the Create Project option, you'll see a couple different options here, which is really nice. I can either do a widescreen um, option here, which is great if you're making YouTube videos or just general videos. And this is what I think most people would probably usually want to use. Um, but if you are trying to create a video that's meant for something like Facebook or Instagram, um, or something like an Instagram feed video that you want to post a very short video, for example, you could use this square orientation or portrait for mobile videos uh, and things like that. So we'll go ahead and just give this a name test and we'll go ahead and Click on create. And once you do that, you can see that you get loaded into this interface that looks very much like a desktop application. And here I have the ability to do all the standard functions that I would want in a video editor um, program here. So from here, I can start recording video. Um, I can import content. Um, I can drag and drop directly any content that I wanna use right here. Uh, whether it's a video, audio, or images that I wanna use. 
I've got shapes that I can add onto my video. I can add in subtitles, uh, motion, and everything that I really need for a new video here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just drag a old video that I did. I'm gonna drag that over here, and you can see if I just hover over, once I'm pulling that file um, over, I can just drag and drop. And now that's going to start uploading the file straight into uh, the product here so that I can start manipulating the content from that video. And you can see that another thing that's really nice about this service is if I was importing this into my video editing software that was local, um, it would take, you know, maybe a minute or so as well. Um, it uploads that file extremely fast, so it's very easy to use. It almost feels like you're using a local application, even though this is all being done through your browser. Okay, so one other thing I wanted to show you just really quick before we get started here that's pretty cool is if you look in the top right-hand corner, um, as I mentioned, this is completely just browser-based here, but if I click on the um, app available option here in the top right hand corner whether you're in Chrome or Edge I can click on that and click on the install option to actually install a local version of Flix here um, so again if you're on a Chromebook or something you know you might not want to do this but if you have a Windows device and you want to use this tool um, it's a really nice option to be able to click on the install option and to use the web app um, that's available for Flix here as well so once you do that, you can see it's going to completely separate that from your browser, and then I can choose to pin it to my taskbar or start, um, and then I can allow that, and then I can maximize it. Now I actually have um, the web app running here in my um, separate window, but also, again, because this is all happening uh, in the cloud, it's still going to minimize the amount of resources that are happening and being used locally on your device. All right, so let's go ahead and look at some of the features here. I can just drag and drop my video that I've already imported. All right, and now that I've dragged it into my timeline, I can go ahead and scrub through it and I can play my um, video here. And as in any video editing software, you do have the ability to interact with this uh, as you would with anything else. I can click on the S hotkey to split media at any time. So it's got all your standard hotkeys that you'd want to work with. I can zoom out in my timeline here. And this is just based off, especially since I do a lot of video editing, one of the things that I really love about this tool, again, I have a gaming machine and I feel uh, the latency when I'm doing video editing, um, even in tools like Camtasia and other services out there that are local clients. And it's actually extremely fast using this web tool, especially since it is all cloud-based. Um, it's very, very fast. And as I'm splitting these clips here, I can still continue to play my video without um, any major issues. Uh, I have the ability to crop the video, so I can go into my fine tuning settings here for cropping um, or just adjust my rate here. Um, of course, I can add in all the standard things that I'd like if I have audio that I want to import. Um, there's a couple things that are um, somewhat unique to the service here. There's actually some built-in custom clips that I can add here so I didn't have to import these at all. Um, just some things that I can add in over um, a part of my video. So if I want to just take this audio clip here, I can add that in. I can go ahead and play that back. So these are great little audio clips that you can add to um, have some background music on your videos that you don't have to separately find. And then of course, when I have my settings up here for my audio, I can adjust the volume level of the audio as such. It also gives me quick access to be able to add a fade or to add a fade out. Um, and it's just super easy because I don't actually have to go anywhere separate to find that. I just click on those options and it automatically adds those um, inbound and outbound fades. I can go over to my text options here, and there's quite a few different options that I can use to add in different text um, over my video. So here I can just choose from one of these presets. Um, I also have some options here where I can put in some headline text, whatever I'd like to use. Um, let's use something like this. I'll just actually, I'll select that, I'll click that. It's gonna drop it onto my timeline here. I can change the color of the text. Perfect. Now I can move this around or I can change it to say whatever I want. And this is all customizable as well. So if I want to change the font text, I can also just do that. 
and use it almost like some traditional text here. Then I can move this around wherever I would like. Add another piece of text here. And as I'm adding content here, again, you can see that I've got many layers that I've already added into my timeline. So you can add as many layers as you'd like, um, depending on what you want to add into your video. Okay, so another thing I can do here is in the shapes option, I can go ahead and just choose an arrow or whatever shape I'd like to throw on the screen here. So I can customize the shapes, edit the shape to whatever I want it to be. So now here I can just go ahead and remove the background. So I've got an arrow that I can use. So again, a number of different uh, graphics that you can add there. Transitions, all kinds of different transitional effects. Um, and all I have to do is just simply drag and drop these onto my timeline to add those um, effects to any of the parts of the video that I want to uh, modify. So pretty straightforward. And then whenever I'm done with my video, once I've saved it, um, and you can see here it's already actually saved, so it's actively saving my progress, which is another nice thing here. I've got version history, uh, which is an amazing feature because with version history, if I click on this option here, um, I can see the auto saves that have happened and I can view that. This is a huge, huge thing for me especially um, because a lot of times I get really frustrated when I'm making modifications to my video. Um, and then it crashes uh, and I have to start all over from scratch. So by using this tool, um, I can actually avoid that because it's auto saving my progress and I can go back to an earlier point and see those different um, pieces. Now, if I click on the export option in the top right hand corner here, um, there's a few different options that I have. I can click on uh, either video, audio or GIF. And so if I wanna do it as a video, I can export and download it as a video. Um, so if I do that, we're gonna just look and see what the process looks like here. It's going to start that video export uh, and once it's completely saved the video then the file will download here if i click on this little downloads option you can see all of your active exports so i've got my file here i haven't titled it anything but you can see the progress and you can see how long it's going to take to export this video which is relatively large because it is larger it's going to take about 23 minutes for it to export um, but I can actually have multiple ones uh, exporting at the same time here. It actually it just dropped. So it's looking like it's going pretty quick. I can simply click on the save as option. And here I can go ahead and give it a name and then click on save. Okay, so I've saved my project and I've also started the exporting process, which it's still exporting. Um, but another thing I wanted to mention is that because this is web-based, um, you have the ability to easily upload this straight to YouTube um, or to another platform if you'd like as well. And so that's something that's gonna be an added benefit here. Um, so first, if I head back to my dashboard, uh, I can see again all of my projects, including this test project, uh, which you can see is 45 minutes long. So it's relatively big here. Now, depending on what plan you have, um, you can see I'm on the business plan here. Um, and the business plan is gonna give you, so you're gonna get 600 minutes uh, of export time and you get 100 gigabytes of storage. So if you have a bunch of different projects on here that you want to keep, you're gonna have 100 gigs with the business plan. Um, there is a free plan as well with more limited storage, depending on what your needs are, um, but you can basically use up to the allotment of storage that you're given. And then for export time, you can export um, up to the allotted amount here as well. Um, so if you're not a really heavy user, this is probably going to be plenty of space depending on what your needs are, but they do have different plans to fit the needs of users that have longer videos they're going to be working with. Okay, so what I wanted to show next is from the dashboard here, um, though what I was just talking about with being able to upload to YouTube um, and to social media, um, if I just right click on this here, this test project, and I click on the export video option, uh, first of all, I also has an, have an option here to share as a review link. Uh, which is pretty cool. It gives me a quick access to do that. But when I click on the export video option here, um, it gives me a ton of different really cool options. Um, so I can publish straight to YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, Google Drive, Dropbox, OneDrive, Vimeo, FlowPlayer. So there's a ton of different options, um, but it's not limited to just one. So if I want to tick multiple of these, I can click on the export video option. 
and it's going to give me the option to put in all of my details um, for all of these different platforms so I can export it directly to um, those social media platforms. So tick the ones that you want to use here and click on the export video option. For now, I'll click on go back to my projects. Just a few more things I wanted to show you. There's a media library here where you can see all of your stuff that you've uploaded. Um, all the review links that you've created will be accessible here. Um, you can see a list of all your exported files here, which I just exported this one, so it just completed. Um, I've got a list of templates here that I can use for video templates. Um, if you want to get started really quickly from something that's already available. And then there are brand kits here um, that you'll be able to easily go in here and access any of your brand kits. So this is especially good if you're using this for a company and you have multiple users that are gonna use the product then they'll be able to go in here and see all of your brand's colors, fonts and things like that, which makes it really easy for the video editor to um, ensure that they're using all of your brand's um, information. So real quick, if we go to the quick tools option, finally there's a beta uh, feature here and under the quick tools option here, um, I have some really cool features. I have a standard screen recorder. Um, so again, as I'd mentioned before, if you wanna use this for your tutorials and all those functions, I can click on the screen recorder option. And this is gonna give me the ability to um, choose how I want to actually record my video. So by using this, I can either just exclusively record my webcam in full screen, or I can do a screen recording, or I can just record my audio, or I can do a combination and you can see that you can choose where you want your picture to be placed so that it's automatically capturing what's on your webcam in a specific location. You can also do a split screen so you can choose your format here. And then once you do that, it's gonna start the process of allowing you to do your recording. You can also enhance audio, which removes uh, background noise from any audio. So if you recorded already, um, or if you have something that you're using, your microphone has background noise during the recording process, you'll be able to use this feature here to make sure that your audio is clearer uh, when you record it for say a tutorial. You have a video compressor here, which you can use to reduce the size of videos, especially if you're trying to upload something rather large to a social media site. And then here you have the option to generate a transcript um, from spoken content, so you can use this feature to easily transcribe anything that you're recording. Okay guys, that's it for this video. Um, thanks for watching. I did want to say a special thank you to Flix here for reaching out um, with interest and collaboration on this video. Um, these are all my opinions. They didn't give me any content specifically that I needed to cover, um, but I just explored the product, played around with it, um, and I really actually do like the product. I think it's really good. In fact, I'm probably gonna use the product myself and play around with it for some of the future video projects that I'm gonna be working on. So I just wanted to throw that out there. So thanks again to Flix here for doing that. But otherwise, guys, that's it for this video. Leave comments below if you have any questions. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you in the next video.